Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and you may notice a difference because there's nothing really behind me, like what used to be behind me before. I mean, I've got my monitor, but a clean desk, and what you can't see is a clean office. It's really crazy. Uh, I can give you an office tour later, but right now I'm gonna talk to you about some cool filament. So if you're ready, let's do this. Go. Ah, welcome back. It's really interesting because here in my office, it's completely and totally cleaned out and I've got nothing really in here. In fact, well, behind the camera are three 3D printers and here to my right, and here to my right are two 3D printers. And then right up there out of camera view is gonna be one more printer. So instead of two printers in my office, I'm going to have six and I think this will be good because now I won't have extra printers in the guest room and I'll be able to remove a few from the laundry room and that'll make everybody happy. But regardless of that, I'll give you a new office tour soon. What I wanted to do is talk to you about some cool filament. I was contacted by Andreas from All Professional 3D. He wanted me to have a look at his filament. He said, Joel, could you print with my filament and, and just give me an idea of what you think? He wasn't asking for a review. He just, he knew that I'd printed with lots of different filaments and he wanted my take on his filament. I thought that's, that's a great idea. Sure, Andreas, send me some filament. Sure enough, Andreas sent me some ABS and this is 1.75 millimeter black ABS. Andreas also sent me some PET G. So this is 1.75 millimeter kind of a baby blue PETG filament. For this video and my purposes today, I'm gonna to be talking about this. This is 1.75 millimeter purple PLA. And it's an interesting filament because right off the bat, it feels different. Normal filaments that I get that aren't exotics are smooth. Color Fab is smooth. Protopasta is smooth. Matter Hackers is smooth. This all professional 3D filament is sort of smooth. It almost has a matte finish and it's it's not coarse like a protopasta exotic. It's more um it's just different. It's not it's not smooth as such, but it's 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 a matte finish. I have no other way of explaining it. And I thought, well that's really interesting because this is the only PLA I've ever used so far that's had a finish like this and I wondered how it would print. So I had to think of a way to print something cool with this filament to get an idea of how it was gonna perform. Right out of the gate, I thought I would print my square. And this is a square I developed really easily, of course. It's four layers thick at 0.25 millimeter layer height and it's 100% plastic, of course. And I'm just, I'm trying to figure out a good temperature to print this filament at and a good speed to print this filament at. I printed this at 75 millimeters per second on my GMAX 1.5 XT Plus. And I came about with 209 centigrade as being an ideal temperature to print this specific PLA at. At these settings at 0.25 millimeter layer height, I was able to cool it starting around layer three or four, I think it was. I kicked on the fan at 50% and I held it for the entire print. This square being four layers thick looks good and it is smooth on top. The top layers mesh together very well and form a top layer that's really good. What's really interesting is I was able to get bed adhesion just right and there was no lifting on any of the corners. But what made it really interesting is after the print was pulled and after everything is cooled down, in fact, this has been cool for a week or so, there's still no lifting or contraction of the material. The material itself has maintained a perfect flat surface. And I think that's really important to mention. Normally, if I'm going to test a filament, I'm going to print a benchy and I'm going to print some squares and some long things and some skinny things and some pointy things. And I'm not doing a filament review as such. I, I just want to give you an idea 
of how this filament prints, and I haven't printed Hellboy's Good Samaritan gun in quite a while, so I thought, I've got this giant roll of filament, let's make Hellboy's gun. The other reason I wanted to make Hellboy's gun is because I had this, and this is the grip for the Good Samaritan gun. I printed this in Color Fab Bamboo Fill, and it had a problem. It was clogged, and this is months and months and months ago that I printed this, and I thought, I really want Hellboy's gun for my own, and when I do, I want a wooden handle, and so I printed it with the bamboo fill, and it feels good, but then I never printed a Hellboy gun for myself, and this is the perfect opportunity. First up, here's the chamber, and here's the four bullets. They go in easily. Everything is smooth on the sides. It's accurate in the dimensions that this model was supposed to have. These were the top layers here, and the top is great. These are the bottom layers of the bullets, and, and those turned out good. As far as the bullets go, there's, there's a bullet, and you can see the tip is decent. It's got a little bit of stringing from the filament, and that's, I think that's okay. I could probably fine tune it a little bit further, but 208, 209 centigrade on the nozzle was perfect for this, for what I was trying to do. So the chamber and the bullets, good to go. Next for the Good Samaritan were the barrel pieces. And these typically curl up right here. They have to be printed with support here and oh, support right over here. There's this flat piece that lays on the bottom. And when the support is removed and the piece is removed, as it cools, these tips usually curl up. But what was really interesting about this model is there was very, very little curl whatsoever. There's a tiny, tiny bit, a tiny, tiny bit, but that is easily, easily cured with a heat gun or just left alone because this is a piece that's gonna go inside other pieces. I figure these pieces are very successful and they show off how well the filament can do on some flat surfaces as well as providing some detail. Also, as far as the filament was concerned with building supports, the support material was able to break away easily. I did use Simplify 3D and I know that their support structures are synonymous with being able to be broken off easily, but I have had support structures that don't break off. And so it was really nice to know that the support structures built with this filament worked really well. There we go. Here are the trigger pieces. And these are two pieces that are printed flat like this and then you put them together. Just like with the other pieces, you worry about some of the lift on the edges. And you'll see that there is very, very little lift. You can see that there's a space here and there is a space here, but it really isn't anything to worry about. It doesn't affect the overall quality because it's so minute. And the fact that it can still be put together easily is very, very welcome news. Things to look for on these prints is when it's building this circular pattern here, because this is built on the Z axis, you can find that sometimes it doesn't provide a smooth surface as it gets towards the top. There's a little bit, just a little string right here. But other than that, it did a good job here. It was flat and smooth here. And this piece right here, this, let's see if I can show you. This is the part that goes into the handle and they printed just fine. They didn't lift at all. Finally, I wanted to highlight these pieces right here. These are both pieces that do require support and they're very, very tricky to print because they print like this and this part right here and the corresponding part on that side like to lift like crazy. You will get, they're so thin and so long that they will just start to bend upwards. And when I built previous versions of this Good Samaritan gun, I had a problem with lifting in the filament that I used and I used a heat gun to try and bring it down, but then the heat gun shrunk the material in another direction and it was very, very frustrating. Now with the material here not not shrinking and not lifting up. You can see now when I take the chamber and put it on, it goes on and rotates freely. 
These pieces printed exceptionally well and they will be easy to put together. Normally at this time I would put together the gun or show you a time lapse, but uh, I've, I've done this before. In fact, there, there's the gun pieces being built in a time lapse. You can see them right there. I figured I didn't have to record that again because I've already printed these pieces in a time lapse, but I do want to mention that the, the pieces themselves for this gun were of high quality using this filament. I was talking with Andreas and he said that his goal was to produce superior high quality filament at Chinese production prices. With that information in mind, when you go to the website to look at this filament, you'll find that each one kilogram roll of filament is less than $24. That's not a bad deal. I know this isn't a filament review, but I wanted to let you know that I was given access to this filament and it performed very satisfactory. So if you do go to allprofessional3d.com and you do order some filament, I suspect you'll have similar results. Finally, I wanted to mention that this Hellboy gun will be put together very soon. I'm gonna be working with Bill Duran who runs the Punished Props YouTube channel. Bill is an amazing prop builder and he's put out some books that let you build with foam and I think they're called Foam Smith and Foam Smith too, they're, they're wonderful books. I'm gonna work with him to put together this gun and then finish this gun properly with paints sanding it, bondo, whatever it takes. So this will be very interesting and I'm, I'm really happy I get to bring this to my channel because I feel that I can print lots of things but I don't have the experience necessary to finish all of these things that I print. I know you guys have been asking me how to finish things and I think finally I'm gonna get the chance to tell you how to do it. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me on this little video here. I'm really sorry the background's kind of boring but don't worry, it's, it's gonna get better, I promise. Thanks for watching, give it a thumbs up if you like good filament. Leave a comment down below if you have any further questions about anything you saw in this video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Throw a dollar to my Patreon if you wanna financially support me. However, I'll never require that and I'm always gonna do this free of charge. All that I ask is every so often you throw me a social high five. And speaking of high fives, as always, High five. He's Joel Telly and he's printing 3D like some Pokemon, a gun from Destiny. And when you call him a nerd, he'll stand up proudly because he's packing some heat from his YouTube family. He can review printers till he falls to the floor. Then he'll give them away like Oprah in 04. There's the Wombat, Ballsbot, G Max XT, then a break for Red Bull and Logos Taco Crispy. Printed koozie in his hand for his drink. He sets up his GoPro and prints out a bender bang. So send him a dollar to put in his head or a self addressed envelope for a sticker instead. There's a nerd vlog on boxings and cues and names, and he'll open your mail every single Friday. And of course you can't forget that pancake bot, and filaments sonic please and Joel's cute little sign. And they printed this printer at Holodex Studio, like Lando Calrissian who's tried Han Solo. So show your support on Patreon or subscribe, and as always, high five.